I'll just... Evening, folks. Uh, we haven't forgotten you. Um, I'm just my game. My machine's running a little bit slow at the minute, so it will be. Uh, will be the screen will be right here in just a moment. Yeah, <laughs> we'll be it. Hello, <laughs> hi everyone. <laughs> Right, there we go. That's what I needed it to do. Boom, we're here! Ta-da! Right, hopefully you can see, you can hear, uh, and all the joyers. Um, if we can just get a quick audio check, make sure we yep. are all good, um, and then we'll get started. So we are looking at the uh, suburban Glasgow, uh, Northwest, which just came out from Rivet Games yesterday? Or the day before? Oh, I'm not entirely sure. I think recently. It was Let's go with recently. recently. Yeah, recently we're we're not too far wrong if we say recently, um, and uh, fantastic little release. It's a bit of a networky route um, uh, around um, Glasgow and um, heading up to, uh, unsurprisingly from the title, the northwest, um, up to Helensborough. Um, so uh, we're going to run a couple of scenarios uh, today. Uh, I thought we'd start with um, Run for the Hills, and then we do. I think it's the East Dunbartonshire commuter. Yeah, it was Dunbartonshire commuter. So, let's we'll start with Run for the Hills. It's stormy weather, it's in the evening, so I don't know. We'll have to see whether or not we get to how much of the route we get to actually see. Um, yeah. I try not to demo routes in the dark or the blizzards, <laughs> but. River Games came out last week, Thursday. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, River <clears throat> Games are in the chat, so uh, keep an eye out for questions and that yes if you have questions for rivet games do post them we won't be able to help probably much answer them although I can, anything you want to know about the route you want to look at the map and show what's there what there is happy to uh, demo anything you want to see um, we do one scenario with this and we'll do one scenario with the 320 so you can see both trains um, and we'll cover a fair bit of the route <coughs> oh, that's a stunning shot so we have fun. had some awesome screenshot contest entries. It's nice to see the South African stuff getting a look in as well. Yeah. Yeah, if anybody wants to enter, uh, go onto the forums. Um, there's a, a tab under, I think it's community submissions. Um, and you've got uh, the opportunity of having one of your screenshots on the, uh, on the intro nice. to the game. <clears throat> Uh, will we see a route like this for console? Um, you will see what routes that are made for the game and those routes that are currently announced are on the roadmap um, on Train Sim World. Um, Train Simulator won't be, uh, won't turn up on um, uh, on consoles. It's not built for consoles. Right, in 2020, the Class 158 DMU was finally signed off for use on the West Highland Line. Today you're driving a test run as far as Helensburg Upper, when the Airdrie train in front clears Belgrove in a couple of minutes, then proceed to Springburn for further instruction. Cats and dogs okay. up in Scotland. Yep. Have a look at the map. We're, we are, where are we? We're down here. We're just coming out of the depot. There's a depot sort of down around here somewhere. Um, and we're coming out of the depot. And we're going to go to Eastfield Siding. Get ourselves another couple of units. Or another unit up here. And then we're going to drive with a couple of stops all the way up to there. So we'll see a fair chunk of the route on this journey. Headlights on, good to go. Instrument lights on. Pop the DRA on. Now taking bets on how often Matt is going to overshoot. <laughs> oh, ye, oh ye of little faith. <laughs> Just because I'd spat at a train yesterday. Did you? No. <laughs> Isn't Helen Helensburgh in the west of western lines of Scotland? Uh, it's in the West Highland Line South. That's where West Highland Line South starts off, I think. Uh -uh. 
<clears throat> it's because you didn't have Pisa B turned on. See, that's it. If I turn Pisa B on, the brakes would have come to a screeching halt. The uh, spad was for run. educational reasons. Yeah, it was totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Binary is asked has any of us been on the on the route uh, in real life? Uh, I haven't personally. Have you? What's the sorry? Someone's asked if we've been on the route in real life. Oh, this one? No, I haven't. No. No. No, neither have I. And someone asked, oh, I'm fine, thank you. Hey there, G-Cook Scotland. Was this bad down to poor rail conditions? It was definitely down to anything except rubbish driving. <laughs> the driver was absolutely on the ball and the world failed him. It was absolutely the world's fault. <laughs> Someone said blame chat as always. Yeah, it's totally chat's <laughs> fault. <laughs> right, we're off to Springbun. <laughs> Moggy's put the driver is so on the ball he's missed the yellow signal. <laughs> the red button on the box is called a DRA, driver's reminder appliance. I had the driver's reminder appliance on because I was sat in front of a red light. Um and it means you have an extra barrier towards ma making the thing go uh when you're on a red light. Um it's just good practice. Um I mean, real railway is more than good practice, it's required. Um, but even more, it's more important uh, when you actually, um, when you stop away from the red light. So if you let's say, for example, you stop um, at a platform and um, the previous signal coming into the platform was a yellow <clears throat> and you pull into the platform and stop and the next signal, the starter, maybe it's around the corner away from the platform, it would be very easy to forget because stuff happens you talk to passenger you've got maybe things that go on inside the cab you'd forget that actually you're sitting with a red in front of you because you can't see it and so the idea of the DRA is to um, and give you that it literally is a reminder it's put the red light in the cab um, and uh, uh, so basically if you go past the yellow and stop put the DRA on um, and that way as soon as you're ready to go You've got a mirror mind. I've got a post-it note in front of you saying you've got a red light in front of you. You click the thing off to go off DRA and then you're instantly back into a mindset of I'm approaching a red light. That's, that's what the DRA is there for. Huh. Well, that's, that's something I've learned. I didn't even know that what, what that was for. <laughs> no, I mean, baby, because DRA is important, but it doesn't take into account your short memory. I put it on, then wonder why the train isn't moving. I'm exactly the same. I will sit there going, what's wrong with this stupid train? Why isn't it moving? And then 20 minutes later... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this route is is um, a really interesting sort of networky route. It kind of goes, it twists its way all around, all over the place. So you can see that we're sort of winding our way around here. You've got Glasgow, uh, Queen Street in here, coming up to here. You've got yeah. this big loop around here. Uh, another um, alternate paths up here. You've got destinations up here. You've got this destination up here, two destinations over there. So there's tons of different places to go, which make it quite an interesting journey and should keep it really interesting to explore. And it's very heavily graded as well. Like coming out of Queen Street, it's like 1 in 46, I think, coming out of Queen Street. Yes, yeah, it's quite a steep, quite a steep ride. More importantly, it's quite a steep drop into Queen Street. Queen Street, where there are buffer stops. Yes. <laughs> so a friend tells me. <laughs> Apparently I'm quite quiet, am I? Am I? You're quiet. Apparently. That'd be a first. No. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Right, let me uh, open up the volume mixer. You're on maximum. Am I? Oh, yeah, yeah, you are a bit on the quiet side. Maybe what I'll do is I will turn the game down a bit.
and then everyone could just turn their volumes up and it'll all be a bit better balanced. Try yep. that. Turn Matt down two clicks. All right. Matt, it's been turned down two clicks. <laughs> Hopefully that's better. Dalaran, so, why does it always rain when you drive? You know, I do, do, I do my best for it not to rain. Because you're not the only one who says that. Tordex doesn't like it when it rains either. But this scenario is raining, so... There wasn't much Danny I could do about Bating it. Kid has lent me the burn cream. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's realism. That's British weather for you. <laughs> yes. Mind you, we've had quite a lot of sun recently. It hasn't been bad. It's just been cold, but it's it's not been. It was it was getting into a, a lot of rain for a while there, but the rain so far. Touchwood seems to have um, sorted itself out. Yeah. Oh, someone's asked us, can you tell us about this train? I can. So, this is a Class 158. They were built specifically for British Rail between 1989 and 1992. Uh, they arrived in service in 17th of September 1990. They still run today. There's currently 170 ser uh, sets in service. Also, oh, sorry, there was no. There was. A, I'll, I'll correct myself. There was 182 cell sets built. 30 were converted to 159s. Um, yes, uh, they have a maximum speed of 90 miles an hour. And an interesting fact: they have these uh, a very similar class of locomotive. Uh, or units in Thailand. Yeah, the front of those um, Thai ones kind of looks like the bits fell off the front. Looks really weird, like some of the stuff is missing. Oh. <laughs> it isn't, but it just is the way it looks compared to the UK one. Ah. It might just be me. I don't know. Right, coming into spring bun. Quick look at the map. Where is this? Here, there. up here. Oh, someone's asking, does the 158 have a, a Perkins or Cummings engine? Uh, I'm not sure they are. Don't know. Yeah, because they obviously they both had them, didn't they? So I'm not sure which variant this would be. Have you guys seen the video? The trains that run right through the Thai market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's pretty cool. Someone <laughs> said Jamie's wearing his tartan shirt for the stream. Very nice. I didn't plan in this, but yeah, it does <laughs> it does suit, doesn't it? <laughs> oh dear. I bet he did plan it, really. No! Oh, no. <laughs> what? Right, let's try again. We're only at the beginning. We'll try it one more time. <laughs> I'll get my own back. <laughs> Shut up, you. <laughs> I hate that. Oh, there they go. <laughs> Don't fail. <laughs> <clears throat> you lot are lovely. I love you so much. <laughs> and then Simon said, blames the chat. <laughs> I just wanted to see the pacer again. <laughs> and the Kriegs lot. Does the train not have an interlock? Well, <laughs> clearly not. <laughs> so it says, Matt, your standard is slipping, making Sam looking like an expert. I know. <laughs> I really don't get enough time to actually sit just to play the game these days. I'm becoming a noob. <laughs> Oh, 
baby and kid has asked what uh, route it is. So it should stay underneath, as you Im can see. Im There we go. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Go away, text. Right. Binary is asking right, Jamie yeah. drive next time we want to learn how it's done. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Ouch. Oh, I love you lot so much. <laughs> oh dear. Apparently the Scott Rail ones have got Cummins engines. Let's watch that 320 this time, because we're not messing about setting the train up this time. So we can watch the 320 glory. Baby and Kids just takes the burn cream off Jamie and gives it to Matt. <laughs> I've got an extra tub, Baby Bean Kids. <laughs> Might need two tubs now. <laughs> will you ever add immersive control to the press call scenarios? Um, I will talk to um, Adam and see what's on his list to do. <clears throat> Getting deja vu. Nah, Moggy, you just woke up from a nap. <laughs> Someone said, Sam would be mocking you for 10 minutes. Lucky you have Jamie with you today. <laughs> yeah, he was very restrained when I ran that red light yesterday. Someone's asked that if we had any pink HSTs yet. No pink HSTs, it's out of order. <laughs> Come on 320, get out of my way. BRB going to report Matt on the forums as a stream bug. Stream <laughs> bug. Oh dear. <clears throat> it's a great route. Just wanted to show you this bit again. <laughs> Connection is struggling a bit there, Jamie. Are you still there? I'm um, supposedly. Hello, hello. Yeah, you're back. Ah. You're back, kind of, but not kind of not. Kind tonight of is. Not. What do you mean tonight no, is roast no, mat night? It's always roast mat night. That's fine. <laughs> uh, All of you who come back, come and join me on the back. breakfast server. I'll get my own back. You're all on the list, that's all I'm saying. Apparently you're saying like a Dalek. Yeah, you went through a bit of a, uh, a troubled patch there. Yeah, I went through a... I went through a... <laughs> Jamie switched to interpret and dance. <laughs> Ed never shows up anymore though, Danny. Can't be on the list if he doesn't show up. Someone says now. Remember, don't open the the doors at Spring Run. I repeat, do not open the doors at Springburn. <laughs> oh, it's only a stop hat, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, you donkey! <laughs> These are all just stop hats. Ah. Yeah. Ah. No, I think it's just busy, to be fair, Bakemean Kid. Okay. 
Right, I've turned my volume down. Hopefully, um, Jamie and I will be more evenly matched now. Is that better? Are we evenly matched? Is that better? <laughs> yeah, I stop at GoBuyers all the time, Faramira. <laughs> it's like it's one of my favourite things to do, I do it so often. So, so, so what could go wrong this time? <laughs> You're all very mean. They're all very, very mean tonight, aren't they? Wow. <laughs> Can we have some horns, please? Bit of tuto. Don't judge my speeding uphill, mate, being kid. Spring burn once again. Yeah, once again. Take two. <laughs> Someone said, uh, Andy has said, so what biscuits are we going to talk about tonight then? <laughs> well, if we're in Scotland, it's got to be shortbread, doesn't it? Uh, Bait Bean Kid it says quite some fierce gradients on the line. Be fun, fun with the steam loco. I think yes, I have. I've uh, mm. I, I tried that today uh, coming out of Queen Street. Uh, just so I could learn the route a bit. Um, came out of Queen Street with uh, Union South Africa. And that was that was pretty interesting. Uh, Thonis, what PC component would you improve first if you want a better performance on TSW2? It very much entirely depends on your setup key thing is to have a balanced machine so if when you run the game you find yourself running with lots of CPU usage and not a lot of GPU usage then bump your CPU up if you're running with not a lot of CPU usage but lots of GPU usage bump your GPU up it's it would be one of those two really I mean the speed of your hard drive doesn't help tremendously it does help a bit it's not like in TS1 where, in this TS, where having an SSD can make an enormous difference. Um, in TS World it doesn't make as much of a difference having the SSD. It does, because like, it does make a bit of a difference, but not quite as staggering as, um, as it is on this. Right. We shall stop at Spring Burn. <laughs> and not open the doors. And not open the doors. <laughs> Someone's asking if we could have a stream of the Bossman Games Merchant Navy. It would be nice to do that. I've been having a go with that, I must admit. Custom Hitcher says, Has 12, have 12 inches of snow coming this weekend. You want some? <laughs> nope. <laughs> you can have all of that for your own purposes, Custom Hitcher. Yeah. I will let you have all of that. Do you get much snow over there? Not ton, not tons, no. No. Uh, 
Don't open the doors. I just, I'm literally holding my hand because it wants to press the T key. <laughs> it's like it's possessed. <laughs> just holding the press, the press, trying to press the T key. Uh, from Springbound, proceed to Eastfield Depot. At 1836 and couple to unit <laughs> oh, it's toast. Yeah. <laughs> Rhyming speed. Well, you, you got to have enough speed for the uh, um, for them to join together, at least. So that's what, twenty, thirty miles now. I thought. <laughs> I think I'd be quite concerned at that speed. <laughs> so stand back and watch. <laughs> well, back. Yes. <laughs> That's fish freeing speed. Yep. It's it's caboose matchsticking speed as well. <laughs> So I said, nah, at least the, at least 50 mile an hour to ensure a safe couple. Oh, I love five miles per hour. It's just a delight. <laughs> yeah, 50 miles per hour is permacouple. Someone has said, a tube fan has said, remember when Sam was running the Canadian route, rammed a train of 24 miles an hour and still failed to couple? It was brill, even derailed. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> So we are up here at uh, Eastfield at the moment. I do like the Scott Rail livery. Yes, me too. Me too. Very different. Uh, Rock and Roll Trainer says we have X Scottish 158s running on my local line and X Scottish 156s. Ah, interesting. Right, you've successfully coupled, change ends and prepare to depart. 
hat er drauf. Wasser in die Meadow. And I think that's all I need to worry about. Turn the wipers off, maybe. Change ends. Headlights. We got headlights. And we're off. At five miles now. Yep. Just to be clear. Yep. Hey, I've been told off for driving with the doors open so many times, Quiet Fox. Coach interlocks will put in because of me. <laughs> Now here's a question for everyone. What's the furthest amount of miles that you've done in a 158? Because I know there's quite a few 158 services that are rather long that they run. Will there ever be a Scottish route for TSW2? Ever is a really long time. Okay, okay. So it's difficult to answer that. Um, but... Um, I hope so. Oh, shush with your speeding. <laughs> Speed a lot this today. Game do, this game just does nothing but complain. <laughs> Someone said they've done just shy of a hundred miles in a 158. Blimey! Um, what does the compressor speed up switch do on the 166? So uh, I don't know what it does on our, but how it's whether it's wired up on our one. But um, what it would do in reality is it would literally just make the compressor run faster, which means it would pump up the um, the main uh, brake pipe uh, faster. Someone said years ago I did uh, rock and roll. I said I did a uh, Middlesbrough to York on a 158 when they did Trans Pennines. Blimey. I think I've done. I can't remember where I've done. I think I've done Norwich to. Uh, where is this? Sheffield is the furthest I've been on a 158. Speed up a bit. Oh, we've got to stop. We've got to stop again. Ah. Don't open the doors. <laughs> uh, you see, it's not a door opening marker, so I'm not even remotely tempted. This is a siding. This will be where we change directions again, because we're heading back down to here, and then we'll be changing directions to go back up that uh, way. Ah, yes, of course. Yeah. Crossing over. Now, an interesting thing is, does anybody, like, take the mileage to, like... For example, if you go behind a locomotive or a certain unit, you jot the number down, and then you jot down how many miles you've been behind it. I did try to do that once, and it, it, it took quite a while. <laughs> No, this isn't passenger run, binary run. This is the test run. Damien, make sure you've reported any issues on the uh, forum.
Right, proceed to Dalby when the traffic on the main line has passed and the signal has cleared. JPZ, uh, Birmingham International to Hollyhead via Shoesby, Wrexham and Chester. Another long one, 1581. Blimey, yeah, that's a long one. I think there was another one, didn't they used to go from, or the, I don't know whether they, they probably still do. I think there was a run that used to go from, uh, was it Shrewsbury up to, um, through Path Poth Maddock and all the way up the Cambrian coast. That's a long trek. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, scenario planner issues with red signals, we're aware of that. We have uh, poop, someone working on it. Into the dragon and said, I've done a class 150 from Brighton to Salisbury, then a 158 from Salisbury to Exeter a few times. Blimey, <laughs> that's a long old run. Yes, yeah, someone's looking at a cement scenario, and our playtest, we can't make it go wrong. <laughs> it's typical, isn't it? <laughs> but one of the Q18 managed to make it go wrong, so we've got their video of what happened when they when it went wrong for them so trying to work out what they did differently where are we Reef? one second we're not far from Glasgow that's Glasgow Queen Street and we're just up here Yeah, I've had plenty of 158s full to the brim. They uh, aren't fun when they're full. Any update on the Arosa line? No. No, you'll see that change in the uh, in the roadmap. At the appropriate time. We're going downhill. We're going downhill. <laughs> and we're getting a request for the horn as well. Uh, Pulse Action Gaming, uh, this is uh, Train Simulator 2021 uh, and uh, the other game is uh, TS uh, Train, Simulator, uh, Train Sim World 2 and they are both different games. Get to speed up now. Like being kept with her, I found a station on the street called Annisland. I wondered if Annie was aware she had a station. I think it's out of order. She got a gun and a station. <laughs> I did have a station after my name, but they closed it. Typical. That was chat's fault as well. Yeah, probably yeah, it's chat's fault. <laughs> Uh, 
what's a real map? <laughs> nah, road map still applies. Yes, because in the in the uh, in the railway terms, a road is uh, technically a railway line, isn't it? The path ahead. Yep. Into the dragon said she'd have called it flight plan to confuse people. <laughs> no, I think that would have probably rubbed some rubbed some so painful sores. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we're five point three from Dalmuir. amazing how up and down it is it's yeah it's all over the place you've really got to watch it because you sort of think to yourself right we're we're on on the way and you'll look away i'll have a look at chat and then i'll look back and suddenly i'm speeding it's like oh <laughs> dang it chat <laughs> blaming the chat <laughs> One thing I haven't done, I haven't done any Scottish railways in real life. Something I must do. Where would you want to go first? Oh, Fort William to Malik, of course. Ah, come on, that's just like saying you're going to go to the beach when you go on holiday. <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> I'll probably want to do one of the heritage railways up there, like Stras Bay or Open Line. Yeah. Have you done any Scottish railways? No. 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 I've We've driven through Scotland a lot because I used to live in the Shetland Islands, north of Scotland. So we would drive right. through Scotland quite frequently, but uh, never actually used the railways really. Um, uh, but, no, I quite fancy the uh, the Highland Line. I've taken the train to Edinburgh. I don't know if that counts. There was a bit of Scotland. I think in I there. think that counts. I think there was counts. a bit of Scotland in that in that journey. What did you have all the way? Did you have a ninety one or pendo. a Yeah, a pendo. Not a pendo. What am I on about? Uh yeah, yeah, it's a ninety one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just thought it was a pendo. Was like Edinburgh. Yeah, it was a special it's journey Alaska. just put on for me. <laughs> Nice AI on this scenario. Yeah. It's nice because you get a nice variation of the amount of um, sets joined together, don't you? Cracking route. I think I like about this route from what I've seen of it so far is the 
the variety of places you can go because it's sort of a bit of a network because of the branch lines and the, especially the, yeah. the, the sort of the loop around Glasgow. Um, and you've got different options as well because you've got the electric and diesel, so you can use what you want, really, can't you? On it? Yeah. So it's brilliant. Someone's asking, "What's uh, what's your favourite UK DMU? What's your favourite, Matt?" It's either the Pacer or the One Hundred One. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think mine has got to be probably the Wagon Machine Bauer rail bus. Technically, a diesel DMU. Which pacer? 142. None of your refurbished modern rubbish. <laughs> I'm yet to see someone who'll make one into a pub yet. <laughs> yeah, you know what you could call it? What's that? Pacer yourself. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> here come the puns. <laughs> and when you're done, make sure you pay, sir. <laughs> oh, dear. It's the name that just keeps on giving. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Don't open the doors. Don't open the doors. Don't open the doors. <laughs> Apparently, Atomic Danny has said there is a primary school that's uh, been that now has a pacer. Yes, wow. I remember seeing that on the news. Pacer of cake. There you go. <laughs> oh, there's so many sort of shop names you could come up with now. Hello. We can now proceed into Dumbo. Yeah. Like how you get the spark effect as well on the three twenties. And the pantographs. Mm-hmm. Your favourite DMU is the Super Voyager. Yeah, they're quite good, yeah. Train boy has asked, "What is Matt's favourite US railroad?" I don't have one. You don't have one. I don't have a favourite US railroad. No. Look, I don't have a favourite UK railroad either. That is true. You know me. I like all trains. If it's a train, I like it. <laughs> this bad guy says, "I think Matt's favourite railroad is anything with trains on it." Yep. Yep. <laughs> Binary runners ask, do trains ever get struck by lightning? I'm not entirely sure by that one. Google might help there. Yes. That is a point. Coming into Dalmuir. I did a load of voiceover recording today. I get to be the voice on another add-on. Oh, do you? Oh. I do. It would be quite fun, I must admit. I would love to do that. It is quite fun, actually, yeah. Don't open the doors, don't open the doors, don't open the doors. <laughs> Repeat, don't open the doors. Yes, I remember Hale and Pacer. Yes, 
Yeah, looking at uh, trains being struck by lightning, I don't think it's something that actually happens. They more likely strike the catenary before they strike the locos themselves. What if there isn't any catenary? That is a point. You've completed your stop at Darmiel. Proceed at 1901 to Dumbarton Central. That has a green. Do <clears throat> you have to talk with a French accent when it's us? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. How many voiceovers have I done so far? Two, I think. I think I did the West Somerset Railway. And maybe the Class 20? Yeah, I'm sure you did West Somerset. Because I'm sure I was having to go with that the other day. And I thought, hmm, this voice is familiar. <laughs> Mute. <laughs> <clears throat> But that French accent offers a crab tree. Pretty much, Danny. Yeah, that's that's why it would be a uh, a bood udia. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Didn't Mrs. P also do some? Yes, she did. Northeast Corridor and she did Long Island Railroad. I think that's the only two she's done. Niggas that get Brian Blessed to do the voiceover. <laughs> oh, Sam would be good as well. Yeah, Sam would be good for a voiceover. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, normally it kind of goes out to sort of the wider company to, you know, get other people involved um, in uh, in doing them. But obviously, we can't go and use the audio recording booth in the office because uh, it's all locked down now. Um, so it relies on the fact that my wife upstairs has her own recording studio because she does voiceover work other than for Dovetail uh, as well. Um, and uh, obviously the audio engineer has got his own recording set up at home as well, so it's kind of primarily us two that have got the set up to be able to do it while we're locked up or while we're locked down like this. No, Binary and Paul hasn't done any. Samson, your wife says you're playing too much TSW. What can you do? Well, I think you probably should listen. Yeah. <laughs> Four miles to Dumbarton Central. Lovely. Do you guys judge people on whether they pick the 45 or the 47? No, actually, that would be a good idea as to whether they are a quality individual or a duff individual. <gasps> Didn't! <laughs> that joke was the peak of this evening. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> it's getting worse. <laughs> <sighs> I'll have to shunt it away, I tell you. Yeah. You're on track, though. Yeah, definitely. Mocky's going to ban me, apparently. Veramero has <laughs> left the stream. Ruh, 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 ruh. Has your wife ever said you're playing too much TSW? 
Yes. Many times. <laughs> I get told I'm a very naughty boy and I'm not going out to play today. <laughs> What is the deal with the overhead power lines on the Great Western Express? Are they ever going to be actually be used? There are no plans to use them, bad guy. Um, who knows what might happen in the future, but certainly at this, as at this point in time, there's no plans to use them. Um, they were added because they had to be there between Paddington and Airport Junction. Um, because they're there in real life. And then the uh, because we modelled around September 2015, I think it was, um, that was when the the, um, the bay catenary was in various states of construction west of Airport Junction. So that's how we. That's why they're sort of in like that. Have I ever driven a train in a real train? Yeah, I've, I've, I have driven. A tiny little sentinel shunter, about eight foot. That's it. Uh, I, I well. <laughs> it's about to show off. Oh, no, I'm about to show off, Andy. Um, I have driven around. I think it's about twenty locomotives. Uh, I will give you some examples. I've driven a BR Standard 9F, a War Department 210. Uh, uh, WD90775 Where's that mute button? <laughs> uh, B12 LNER B12 8572 Driven that twice um, Driven um, What else have I driven? Some Hunslets One at Fistiniog uh, One at uh, Lila It was for Fistiniog um, uh, Driven a Class 25 as well so yeah, quite a few, and I've driven a no way Gronk as well. Oh, uh, Moggy, Moggy, yeah. <laughs> the Barton Central coming up ahead of us. Someone just says, "Mate, you got to step up your game now." <laughs> I haven't got time to go out and actually see what real trains look like. <laughs> oh, an 08 now, I'm impressed. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I've driven an 08. Um, quite interesting. It's quite a different locomotive to drive. Class 25 is interesting as well. Um... But I prefer driving steam because it's just you feel the shit. I must admit, when you're driving a 9F and you just open the regulator and it just goes, it's like, whoa, what the hell is it? <laughs> driving up a 1 in 80 gradient as well. Awesome. Stop! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Crikey, the brakes on this thing! Have you made it? Just... I opened the doors. I opened the doors! <laughs> oh no! Oh dear. Oops. <laughs> it's not your night tonight, Matt, is it? <laughs> I had a long week. You completed your stop. Do not move the train. <laughs> Do not move the train. <laughs> Good enough. Right. We now can move the train. <laughs> What's with the doors? Well, I wasn't supposed to open the doors. 
Right, we're on to Helen's Brapa now, 8.98 miles, which will be the end of this run, I think. Yes. Yeah. So we have gone from round here up to here, uh, up to there, back down to here, back across here, and we're working our way all the way along here up to Helensborough Upper here. Good old test run. Oh, and you're speeding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just did have the route map on. Thank yeah. you, Dragon. Did you see what you wanted to see? I'll bring it up again later on, I'm sure. <laughs> Rock and roll train says passengers are advised it's a bit of a drop to the ground. <laughs> Were you due back in the office before the new lockdown happened? No, ZG. In fact, what happened was the company had um, decided that um, everyone was uh, they would just remain with everyone at home because it's working. Um, uh, for the time being until everything was more clear uh, and we it had already been set probably a good month or so ago at least if not more that um, everyone would remain at work well, we do continue working at home until end of March at the earliest Moggy's asked is the Dovetail Games freezer okay I worry so <laughs> The Dovetail Games Freezer is fine. I checked in on it just today. <laughs> it remains empty. That's probably not your definition of okay, but... And someone's asked me... M uh, M L H S T has asked me, have I been to the Dovetail office? No, I haven't, actually. Nope. It's that amazing how many people that work for Dovetail now have never been to the Dovetail office. No, it's, the it's company crazy. has grown so much since March when we locked down. I think it's been one of the biggest growth periods in the company for hiring people. Which wow. is amazing. You'd think it would work the other way around and it would be difficult. But actually the com everyone in the company has stepped up so much to be able to um, continue expanding the team. And I think it's worked really, really well. Yeah. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be here, would I? <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. There's at least two people on my uh, on my track and signalling team wouldn't be. So, I'm trying to think in the gameplay team, one maybe. So, yeah, because I haven't met one of them, I don't think. So, no, I think it's. Uh, um, yeah, it's been really good. It's actually worked. It's amazing how well the team have stepped up to being able to figure out a new hiring process, um, figure out a new interviewing process, and then once we've hired people, get kit out to them and get them set up and onboarded into the company. Mm. Um, mm. And it's worked really, really well. Binary run. There, are, Like I said, there are tons of people in the company who I've never met in real life, including myself and Jamie. Yeah. I've never met Natalie. I haven't met in real life three people on two because I manage two teams and I haven't met at least three of them. Other than Mine. virtually on the other end of a video call. Yeah. And that's fine. That's the world we live in now. It's actually not the end of the world. We see each other on webcams far too many times a day. Yeah. It's quite amazing when you think about it that, you know, that if this wasn't here, you know, it'd be incredible, wouldn't it? You know. Do you guys do Zoom interviews? Uh, we use Microsoft Teams, but yeah, same principle. Yeah. Does Dimitri still work at DTG? No, he doesn't. No, he moved on. I can't remember where he is. He works now. Uh, 
Uh, do you manage the production of all the TSW2 stuff or just some of it? So I'm a senior producer, but there are lots of team leaders that do all the actual hard work and dev managers that look after the the day-to-day -day, um, of you know of, um, how the construction is going and is it meeting deadlines and so forth. What I tend to focus on is I've got two teams, so I look after the gameplay team directly um, and I look after the teams that do the terrain, the track, signals, markers and all that stuff so all the infrastructure um so i look after those two teams so i look at those i have meetings with them um at least once or twice a day um and the rest of the team we have a morning stand up um and really i just get involved when i need to make a decision make a call on you know do we want do we want it to do this? Is it is doing that important for this product, or should we do? If we have to do A or B, do we do A or B? You can't have both. Which one do you want? You know, it's those kinds of things that I tend to get involved in. Um, obviously, I say I want A and B. How do we make that happen? And then everyone just gets angry with me. <laughs> Nick K, do you need sound engineers? Um, I can't remember at the moment. If you go onto the Dovetail Games website, there is a uh, careers um, part in there and where we advertise all the roles. I think there's still quite a few up there. Um, yeah, there is, yeah. Then, um, yeah, go ahead and um, uh, go and, you know, if you see something you like, then apply. Do you guys do coding tests for dev? Yes. We do gameplay tests for gameplay people. We do audio tests for audio people. There's, there's tests, as, but it is part of the interview process. So almost like a lose-lose situation. I mean, not really bad, Clay, no, because what it means is that I can help make sure that the team focus on things that are genuinely more important. You know, you could you could end up taking all of the dev cycle of an entire route, making one kilometre perfect, and then you wouldn't get a route. So it's about helping, and the team are really good at knowing from historic, you know, the right way to do these things, but things, new things will come up in a route, and it's, you know, is it important that we make this accessible because that will take us a load of time whereas we could spend that time making this other stuff better oh no it's not important that you make that accessible or in some cases yes i really do want that accessible you know and we can have a discussion about how we manage that there isn't an infinite resource there isn't an infinite time for anything and it's just working out how do you best spend that time to get a product which is the best it can be which is actually it's difficult but it's it's sort of like it's a really fun place to be because you know, you're helping try and, I'm helping to try and shape things into hopefully products you all enjoy. Um like I said, for the most part the teams already understand a lot of that stuff, so um they're really, really good at what they do. Yeah. This is nice, I like this. It's a lovely route, isn't it? I'm looking forward to doing some workshop Wednesdays on this. Yes. Make sure you do some workshop Wednesday scenarios, guys. Yes, aware of the catenary pole uh, wicket. Unfortunately, it's a root issue, and I wasn't able to get that fixed for a uh, loco pack. It is on a list for potentially looking into at some point, but doesn't cause any actual issues other than looking a bit rubbish. How hard would it be to open up other areas of some routes? Well, and it depends. If you want to walk around it, then those areas need to be made up to the same standard as what we call so we model things according to a touchable zone a near zone and a far zone a uh, touchable zone is everywhere you can walk and as well as um, everything having to be modeled to a high standard it all has to have all its collisions set up so that you can't walk through things and into things and get trapped inside things and then the ter terrain has to be all checked to make sure that you don't find areas you can fall through the floor um, because there can be little gaps in seams in the terrain and things like that where you can fall through. So everything outside of the fence has not been tested. 
So effectively, all of that, if you extend that, then all of that would need to be tested and fixed up. A detail level would then be needed to be increased um, in those areas, because, and the models would need to stand up to being looked up to um, closer, whereas the models in the near zone are not designed to be looked at closely. They're designed to be looked at from the touchable zone. Um, so they'll look pixely and blocky. Mm. Uh, and low detail if you try and walk up to them. So you'd have to up-res all of those, which then makes them take more memory. And, um, you know, we all know what problem memory is. Um, so that's where it becomes important to make it, you know, important to choose where you want to make it, uh, get, you know, let people, let the players have access. Where is it actually going to make a difference versus where is it just neat? In an ideal world, you'd make it all accessible. Yeah. But if it's, it's not going to be a great experience, why? You know, it's interesting that there's all the different levels. Of the, you know, amazing. Rivet says, explaining the zones there as well on the YouTube dev blog video. There you go. Yeah. Rivet, why don't you give one of the moderators um, a link to that video and they can ping it up on the chat for people who are interested? Yeah. I love this. I love that fixed distance signpost. It's just the ultimate in cheap. Instead oh, no. of putting a signal there, just put a post. Yeah. Just put a signal on a on a poster. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Solved. All right, coming into Helensborough Upper. Don't open the doors. Don't open the doors. Don't open the doors. <laughs> we'll be doing uh, another scenario, Forza Horizon, so I can show you the map once we get in that one. Stop board, look at that. Is that an RETB from here? I think it is. Right. Oh, the uh, glowing Ebola screen on the 143. Yes, uh, I'll make sure that's on someone's list as well. Not quite sure what went wrong there. You have completed the scenario successfully. Hooray! Positive points. <laughs> Positive. <laughs> RETB tube fan. RETB, radio electronic token block uh, system. Right, back to Korea, and this time we'll do the East Dumbartonshire commuter scenario. No, I must have got a bronze for that one, I guess, at six, uh, 680. Yeah. Uh, Matt H, just want to say BR363 is amazing. Nice, so nice to get some more gameplay on RSN. Yes, that was what I thought as well. It was really nice. To, I was I was enjoying getting back to that route, and I've forgotten how much I quite enjoyed the Royal Zeke route, actually. You got a fan on or a heater? You mean that one? I can turn that one off, actually. That I use. That's my fan. A little fan I use on my desk to cool my laptop down. Ah. Because the three fa the fans inside it and the three fans underneath it aren't enough. <laughs> I must admit my laptop's quite cool because I set how loud I want the fans to be. It's quite good, clever that. Ah, uh, you see, I've gone the other way. I've told my machine to be as fast as possible. <laughs> All right, welcome to this early evening stopper service to Bathgate. Today you'll be driving the train as far as Belgrove. Open the doors to allow passengers to board the train. We haven't got a red light, which is good. Let's get some of that. 
that one. There you go. We've got lights. Oh, we've got destinations. Well, Bathgate. But we're not going to Bathgate. We're going to Belgrove. Or is this a Bathgate service? I can't remember what it said now. Never mind. Right. Never mind. Instrument lights on. Pop the brakes back to step two. Can you get lower than a bronze like a TSW participation award? No. Nico Diva is saying, what is this station? This station? Scary hair put clear cut man over there. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, Mungavi. Uh, so we're up on one of the branches up here. And we're going to be running down around here. And then back around to Belgrove, which is there. And it's doing it backwards. Oh, I see. We're actually going to be going this way down here, looking at that. So this is actually different. All yeah. different track except for this bit here, basically. Yeah. It's almost like I planned it. <laughs> uh, Oslan, new sounds the one six six sound great. Yes, yeah, so I actually um, want to correct myself from last, uh, last night's stream where I said that the uh, it was just mixing work that had been done on the one six six. Ed, who did the work on the one six six, sent me a big long list of the things he changed, and yeah, it had extensive work. <laughs> Not just on the sounds, but on the physics as well. Brilliant. Something that I need to have a go on. I haven't done done uh, Great Western Express. Well, I have I have done Great Western Express. I think when I had twenty twenty, I think possibly. I haven't done it on TSW two yet. It's Milgi, is it? Okay then. Fortunately, I think I got my French pronunciations okay today, so. <laughs> was it expleding Christmas poddings, or was it... Uh... <laughs> well, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be told I was wrong. And I'll just blame it on you guys, to be fair, so. <laughs> <laughs> just blame it on the chat. It's just like, yeah, well, it's chat's fault. But we weren't even there! I know! <laughs> you should have been there then, you. shouldn't you? <laughs> That's where you have like everybody who's been watching our streams just stand at the front of the front of your door, like when you're doing your voice uh, voiceover, saying, "Make sure you do it right." That's the right pronunciation. <laughs> Coming up on Hillfoot. Yeah. Out in the single track wilds. Here's a question for everyone. Who, what, uh, which Rivet Games route is your favourite? Blake Bean Kid says this one. This one. Ah. Opening the doors correctly. <laughs> you won't get you won't get uh, marked down for not doing. <laughs> Why are old oak and reading depots missing from GWB? What do you mean, Michael Nunnery? There are there. You can't really miss them. They're huge. That. Passengers have now boarded the train. Proceed at 1727 to the next timetable stop at Besden. That's probably like Beden or something in Scottish, I don't know. <laughs> oh, we'll set the brakes off, shall we, just for the giggles? Yep. <laughs> 
people are saying they're street streets. Yes, definitely. Totally agree with that. I love the Swiss streets, they do. I'm not sure which out of the Swiss is my favourite though. You haven't purchased TSW two yet, Sedgy. Oh, dum, dum, For dum, dum. shame. <laughs> yes, Danny, there is some brilliant, uh, some lovely Swiss merge routes as well. Yeah. I think I was playing one of them only the other day. Um, Who did the merged routes then, Danny? Yeah, did you? Da <laughs> Why are there two DRA switches? There aren't. The left hand ones is Sander. That one ah. is a DRA. Why are these lines limited to 50 miles an hour? It might be down to the infrastructure around the lines, i.e. if the soil that, that, the line, that the lines are on doesn't support, for, you know, that, that would, uh, you know, um, be undermined by faster trains, then they'll hold the train speeds back to um, maintain the, um, the lines so they need less maintenance. Do you two study computers at uni? I did a um, a computer science um, BSc, yeah. And I no, I I didn't study computers actually. I studied animation at university. I'm a total computer nerd. <laughs> I just love computers. I noticed a lot of people are saying the Gotthard barn. I would love to see someone try and do... I'd, I haven't seen anybody do any workshop scenarios for the Gotthard barn yet, so it would be good if any, someone can make some scenarios for the Gotthard barn. It would be brilliant. Ouch, my being good. <laughs> Although props to you know, for you for knowing what a difference engine was. Babbage would be pl proud. Oh, Danny says apparently there's an issue with the work. Oh, there's an issue with the workshop thing for Gotthard Bun. Ah, okay. I'll look into that one then. If there is. So this is a good example of where DRA is useful. I just passed a yellow light, so I know that my next signal is red, and while I'm driving like this, it's in my, my memory, that it's in my mind that I'm driving to a red signal. But look on the, on the HUD where the red signal is. It's quite a way, you know, it's about um, 0.15 of a mile away from the station. So the chances are I can't see it from the station. So I'll stop, lean out the window, have a, have a natter with a, uh, a train spotter who is um hasn't seen this class before and tries to beg for a cab ride um <laughs> and uh after i've fended him off um and i think to myself right it's time to go shut the doors i've completely forgotten because my my sense of brain of what's going on has gone away so i stop and i hit the dra button to remind me that i'm on a red light that's what the dra is for there's a really good video uh which is quite amusing because of the time it was recorded uh, about spad risks on YouTube um, and it goes through some of the genuine the, the general causes of spads um, and uh, it's just it's quite amusing just because of the way it's been produced it's it's a, it's a video of the era let's call it that <clears throat> Ha ha ha. 
I wonder how many of them could apply to your mishaps. Probably all of them, and some new ones that no one even thought would even anyone be bad enough to do. Passengers have now boarded the train. Proceed at 17.32 for your next time to have a stop at Annasland. Right, I can now release the DRA, and now I'm thinking to myself, right, don't forget the red light. Of course, I've immediately forgotten the red light. There you go. There you go. <laughs> The brake doesn't come on if you turn DRA on Quiet Fox. What it does is it cuts out the throttle. So you can't apply power. You can release the brake, but you can't apply power. So if you're on a hill, you will now gracefully slide forward. Now, actually, we've gone back up to a double yellow, so we're good. But the point was, it, it put it back into my forebrain um, that I had a uh, an adverse signal ahead of me. Yeah, you definitely don't want to do a spad. No, not on stream. Oh, everyone, no one would ever let me forget it if I spat it on stream. <laughs> Don't even get me started about driving with the doors open. Crikey. <laughs> to be a total noob to do that. <laughs> All blowing up a steam loco. <laughs> oh, I've never done that. <clears throat> Double yellow again. You mean when people spad in real life, the world doesn't come to a screeching halt? Yes, when you when you spad in real life, um, everything comes to a screeching halt. Everything around you comes to a screeching halt. Yeah. <laughs> Best one is blowing up a steamer while doing a tutorial on how to drive a steamer. That must have been baked bean kid. <laughs> Was that baked bean kid or moggy? <laughs> No, that's Ed. Okay, that should have been, should have been my other guess, really. <laughs> and the starter is red, so we're good to go into the station. On a 1 in 89 as well. I'm sure coming into a... Oh, it's gone back up to yellow. Yes. No spad. <laughs> Uh, just Hill Billy says now, 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 Matt. Don't lie. You've blown up the steamer at least once. Or well, more than once. <laughs> more than once. <laughs> <laughs> Once a week, kid. it's more like it. Yeah, there you go. There he is. There he is. I was waiting for someone to stir his pot. <laughs> it's the pot of puns and the burns. <laughs> it's getting ever larger. I must admit, it's getting ever, ever larger. How are we doing on the map here? So we have made it across down to... Oh, Anison's obviously in the middle here. Mm. Passengers have now boarded the train. We're going to Heinland. So come across down now, down to here. To wherever the Heinland place is. Oh, we've got doors closed. We've got doors closed. Excellent. Not paranoid at all. Double yellow lights. Oh, see you later, Rivet Games. I say good night, everyone. See you I'm later, Rivet. Yep. Yeah. Baby Kid has run out of puns! <gasps> Everyone take advantage. Yeah. Come up with your best puns now. <laughs> no. No. Come up with lots of things that could be punned. <laughs> join the pun train. Chris is on the stream, so I'm sure he'll pick up the slack. <laughs> hey, bean kids run out of beans. That just means in bean makes his bean means he's baked kid, doesn't it? I thought he's baked potato, baked potato and beans. There you go. 
He's completely baked out. <laughs> there he goes, Chris. He's off. <laughs> Ah, oh, his fave, the Baker blue line. <laughs> There's our single yellow again. We're following a lot of yellows, aren't we? Keeps you on your toes and actually makes for a really fun scenario. It does. Pete is asking, are the 320 and the 158 on this route made by Rivet or are they made by uh, Dovetail Games? I don't know the answer to that question, Peter. Patches are now boarded, 17.39 to stop at Partick. Okay. Oh, we've had a request. Teach us on another stream how to drive a, a Jinty properly. <laughs> oh, I love that train. The Mesh Tools Jinty is one of my favourites. I can do a stream where I show you how to blow that one up, no problem at all. <laughs> JP says it is pick up. Perk up. Did somebody say Jinty? <laughs> right. JP likes the Jinties as well. He's a man of man of class and taste. <laughs> Joe says, "Yeah, I like Jinty." Ginger. Ginger. <laughs> 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 yeah. tomorrow on my own channel. I don't know, Paul. I haven't thought about what I might do tomorrow yet. Maybe. I am streaming on my own channel after this. It's Wreckfest tonight. Woo! Find me. you got a busy night to that, then. Nah, Wreckfest isn't busy. Wreckfest is fun! This is fun, too, but it's different fun. Baking Ed, do you know why the Jinty is called Jinty? I don't know, actually. That's one thing I do not know. Go on, Baking Kid, tell us. Passions are now boarded. We are now going to Charing Cross. This is a journey to London. Yes. <laughs> We're going to take our commuter train to London and back. Yeah. Be a good few hours yet, guys. <laughs> the Charing Cross. Oh, dear. I like how the route feels like it's, you know, you, as it is, it's in, in the middle of the. In the middle of all the sort of the bustle. Yeah. Jinty is a Scottish form of the name Janet, and that is it. Ah.
Roy Fonseca's going to go and have some fun with NTP. Excellent. Obviously, you'll be choosing 45, just to be clear. <laughs> It'd be his peak then. Oh, is that the SEC over there? I think it is. It looks like the SEC. Sorry, the SECC. I've done two model railway shows. At least two model railway shows at the SECC. Have you? Yeah. Brilliant venue. It really is good. Yeah, in fact. We parked here and we went in there. Oh wow. That's quite a good model of it actually. Yeah, I remember we we parked here and we uh, we were in there somewhere. In fact at one point they were driving the cars in and out there. You literally drove through the exhibition with to, to get to your stand. Wow. Awesome. I must admit, it's, it's good because you know doing things like Wally. I must admit, you you go to Wally and you see the you see the steel, actual full size locomotives in the you know when you're walking around Wally. Pretty pretty amazing that they can fit them in there. Yeah, well they bring them in first and yeah. um, uh, generally leave them on the trailers. Yeah, they do, don't they? Yeah. A lot of the narrow gauge stuff they don't know. Do they? They no, take them off. Roll it off and then and then um, haul it back on again when they bring the trailer back. Yeah. Oh, it's just called the SEC now, is it? Okay. It was the SECC the last time I went, which is a while ago now. The SECC is the exhibition centre, Danny. Welcome to London. Yep. <laughs> Change here for trains to Blackfriars. Gillingham. And Glasgow. <laughs> and and Glasgow. <laughs> <coughs> and he said, have I ever been on the Neen Valley Railway? Yes, I have. More than once, I think. Can't remember how many times off the top of my head. One of our favourite takeaways. I like, mm. I like a nice Chinese. Yeah, yeah I, I, I would say Chinese, and you got to have a fish and chips. I mean, come on. Oh, I don't have that anywhere near often enough. That is a very good shout. Oh. Glasgow Queen Street, platform nine. So you see that both Queen Streets are actually modelled because uh, you've got the uh, the uh, one those platforms and you've got these ones. We're going to go at these ones. Can't remember which is upper and which is lower. I think this is upper. No, it's, it's lower. This one. This is lower. Okay. This is lower. Yeah. Fish fingers and custard. That's a new one. No, it's a Doctor Whoism. Oh, right. There are two Charing Crosses, I know, Patrick, yeah, I, I know. know. There are two of lots of places, though. you got to make sure that when you're buying your tickets, you make sure you're buying the right ones. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going from uh, Victoria to Charing Cross. It's going to cost me 300 quid. <laughs> it's like, ah! <laughs> Have you put the Scottish one? Ah! Yes. <laughs> You've never had fish and chips, Samson. Wait, what? What? <laughs> You're missing out. 
Uh, see, our local Chinese restaurants, Crucible, have actually... Um, one of the things with the uh, the lockdown is we had to um, sort of go to different ones because some of the ones we use regularly um, shut down um, for a while. Um, so it was really good because we were able to try some different ones. We've actually found a couple of really good um, ones in the area that are significantly better than what we were using. So, um, yeah. And I taught myself to use chopsticks as well. So now eating Chinese is, is it's entertaining as well as filling. <laughs> Is it? Oh God, it's dropped again. I'm not too bad these days. I'm not too bad these days. I can actually um, sustain myself with chopsticks. When I started, it was basically cold dinner by the time I'd finished. But <laughs> uh, right, next time table stop at High Street. Golden syrup sandwiches dipped in tea. See, golden syrup sandwiches. I'm with you. Dipped in tea, you lost me. <laughs> I am no longer on board your train. <laughs> your train is going to a padded station. Oh, no. Nick says there's a New York in Lincolnshire near me. Yeah, it's quite interesting how many different uh, uh, names have come across from different parts of the world. Like you can have well, there's been know, most places in in America come from uh, places in the UK, and like New York yeah. is literally New York. Yeah. Um, um, but there's there's what always makes me smile is the different way they're used. So. Boston is this huge place in Massachusetts. It's a major city. It's like London. Yeah. Boston, in Lancashire, I think it is, is a little hamlet. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little next to nothing. Um, yeah. And then you've got Suffolk, which is a county in the UK. It's huge. Yeah. And I think it's a little town in, in, in Massachusetts. I think it's, it's Suffolk. Lincolnshire, yeah, that's Lincolnshire. Norfolk that and Norwich, isn't it? I think Norfolk and Norwich are the same, aren't they? Uh, Norfolk is a county here, and in America it's a town or city. Lincolnshire. I know it began with an L and had Shire in it. I was close. <laughs> oh, yeah, Five Guys is really good. That, no, that's got to be... That's treat food, though. That's expensive, and it's really filling, but it's very, very good. Right, next time stop at Belgrave, which will be the final stop on this service. Would everybody who is fast asleep please now wake up? <laughs> I'm talking to you lot. Yes. <laughs> it's not a hamlet, it's a town. Oh, okay. It's still not a city like like London or Boston, though, is it? That was what I was getting at. Is Welsh names in Pennsylvania? Ah... I R C I I R C Norfolk is a huge naval it air is, base. Yeah, Norfolk's a huge naval air base, yeah. Yeah. Wow. But then you've got London, Ontario, which is not too far from Chatham, Ontario, and Rochester, Ontario. <laughs> Makes you wonder where they got all the names from, doesn't it? Well, it all sort of it all started when someone decided they'd call the first place they went to New England. <laughs> and you just knew that from a naming sort of standpoint, they were on a downer. <laughs> it's all downhill from here. <laughs> it's like I get your pattern. Where are we going after New England? New York? Yes. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> right. There's a new castle in Australia. Yes, there is, isn't there? Yeah. Because there was an old route for a Microsoft train sim many, many years ago that confused the heck out of me. Because <laughs> the name of it, it even makes it sound British. Coles to Newcastle. 
<laughs> so you're kind of thinking, well, actually, not really, because you're thinking, why am I taking coal to Newcastle? That feels like it's going the wrong way. They probably don't need any more coal. <clears throat> but actually, it's a really long America, uh, Australian freight route. <laughs> PJ and Gross, you've got to remember the early American names are ultimately created by Englishmen. I know, I'm jesting, I am jesting. I have the greatest respect for my American friends, one of which is my wife. Well done, driver, you have successfully completed the scenario. Another driver will relieve you here. Boom! Boom. What'd you get? What'd I get? I got Glod! I got 986! Oh! Oh yeah! <laughs> Excellent. So there you go, folks. That is Suburban Glasgow Northwest out from Rivet Games uh, as of last Thursday, as I've been corrected. Um, and uh, yeah, there's some good fun to be had there. So I'm looking forward to seeing some great workshop scenarios. So make sure you get get the creative juices flowing and see some amazing stuff up there. And uh, maybe um, we'll, Jamie will will uh, go and have we'll have a, uh, a Suburban Glasgow in two or three weeks special on the workshop Wednesday, and see what uh, see what we can run. All right, folks. Right, well, I think we'll call it a night. Uh, have a great yeah. weekend. Uh, I'm going to go and play some Wreckfest on my stream now, and uh, we'll see you on Tuesday for the Roadmap stream. I think um, it is, That'll yeah. be Sam and Adam on Tuesday for the Roadmap stream. All right, folks, yeah. take care, have a great weekend, and we'll catch you later. Bye-bye. Yeah, see you later. Bye-bye.